Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio. With a longtime friend, Dr. Amy Wecker. Amy, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm awesome. Good to see you. It is now Thursday, January 19th, and it is actually in the evening. Amy is making time out of her busy personal schedule to be on the Jay Campbell podcast. So I'm very grateful for that. So for you guys that don't know Amy, she is the lead female hormone optimization doctor for MHI, which is the Medical Health Institute in Miami. She also has a big practice. Let me just give you guys her bio. She is a board-certified internist and infectious disease specialist who is committed to the prevention of chronic disease via the reduction of inflammation associated with aging. And as I told you guys, she is the, the female specialist uh, at MHI. And obviously, I've been telling a lot of you guys uh, that I've been really excited to get her on. Her and I attempted to do a podcast back when I was moving to Mexico, and it just wasn't the right time. But finally, now here we are in the uh, middle of January, and I got her. So this podcast and this conversation today is going to be around, you know, helping you guys from a standpoint of directing females, you know, who have, what I would say, for the most part, been underserved. Uh, to, to you and to MHI in Florida. And that's not just people in Florida. This is obviously all across North America. So uh, with all that said, let me just kind of ask you, like, you know, what is your thought process right now before you get into your talking points about female health optimization? Like, where do you see it now and where it's going? Well, I mean, I think, unfortunately, traditionally, women, as we get older, we've become invisible and we've we've kind of become discarded and, you know, after we're done with our reproductive years, nature doesn't really have much of a role for us anymore. But of course, you know, we don't agree with that. Women, I think, are really obviously a very important part of society. And we deserve to have healthy, happy, long lives. And a lot of changes happen with our hormones around perimenopause, menopause. And I don't think that we're just doomed to, to live in misery after menopause. And, and unfortunately, the Women's Health Initiative, the WHI, which was a study that was done in the early 2000s, I think really set women very far back. And for anyone who's not familiar with that, basically, it was a study that looked at a couple of synthetic hormones, Premarin and Provera, which are taken from pregnant horse urine. And so they look at these synthetic hormones and, hey, they cause cancer. So, okay. And, and I agree that, they, that they, they do cause cancer in some situations, but they, the, the researchers took the results of those studies and they extrapolated that to say that no women should ever receive any hormones ever, which is really doing us a big disservice because bioidentical hormones are safe and effective and actually will maintain our quality of life or give us our quality of life back if we've lost it. And, and um you know, they just, it was really a tragedy what happened with that study. And so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to try to dispel some of those myths and make sure that we can take our lives back and, and stay healthy and vibrant as we age. I'm glad you brought that up, Mamie, because it's true. Uh, and we, we should drill down on that. I mean, let me just ask you, and obviously it's an opinion question, but like how many women, because of the, you know, that study and that, you know, let's just call it a debacle. I mean, that's really what it was because it's really not based on evidence-based medicine. Um, how many women are not seeking hormonal optimization as they age? You know, you talked about perimenopausal, postmenopausal uh, women because of that. I mean, I mean, what are the percentages of women who seek out hormonal optimization? You know, that's an interesting question. And I, I honestly have no idea, but I will tell you that one of my very closest friends who I love very much is actually a breast cancer surgeon. 
and she thinks that everything gives you breast cancer because she's a breast cancer surgeon. Right. So, and, and, you know, we, so I'm, I'm 47 and she's 48. We've been friends for many, many years. You know, we used to, I, I, like you heard, I'm an infectious diseases specialist by trade. And so I did general hospital based infectious diseases for a long time. And that's how we know each other. And as we've gotten older, I, I see her really falling apart. And, you know, I would love to give her some bioidentical hormones and she's 100% opposed to it because she's a breast cancer surgeon. And, and the whole thing is just heartbreaking. But, you know, like conventional, conventional med- medical wisdom is starting to slowly come around now. Right. But, but, you know, the vast majority of women have been deprived of their hormones for a long, long time. It's mind blowing. You know, my wife is a couple of years older than you. You guys are both very, very attractive women. Um, you know, and anybody 20 years younger would say that, you know, if they saw you guys in public and there's no question that you definitely train hard and you, you know, you do your introspective work, both of you, you know, you're really into yoga. So is Monica and stuff. But the truth is, is you guys are suppressing aging because of the adjuvants, the hormonal optimization, the peptides, you know, the supplements, all these things that, you know, again, the people like us that, you know, navigate this health optimization space use. And it's mind blowing that so many women, you know, you said at the very beginning of the show, don't know this because again, they see themselves because of society as, you know, over the hill, so to speak, once they're past giving birth, you know, and, and it's like a downward spiral and it's the exact opposite. Yeah. Well, the, the truth is that we produce tons and tons and tons of everything until we're about 25 and then things start to slowly decline. And yeah, I think most people give or take feel totally fine until our mid thirties. And then we start to very slowly notice, okay, things are not the same as they used to be. And by the time we're in our forties, things are not the same as they used to be. And at a certain point, you're going to make a choice. You're either going to put those biochemicals back into your body or, or you have to accept the natural consequences of getting older, which I mean, I, I've got a lot of stuff to do. Like I can't can't be exhausted all the time. I'm like, I I don't want to, you know, like we've got options now, thank goodness. And and so I, I want to take full advantage. That's awesome. And that's exactly what you should do. I mean, obviously you wouldn't be on the show and I wouldn't be talking to you if we weren't pro that. I mean, that's mind blowing though, with your friend who's a surgeon or a breast cancer surgeon, because you're right. I mean, they literally are brainwashed. Let's just call it entrained by the WHI study and what they think hormones actually do. It's insane to yeah. think that you could not teach her. I mean, I would say that, you know, you could go and show her, you know, pictures of people like you and Monica and 10 other women who are in their early fifties that are hormonally optimized. And you could be like, uh, you're full of shit, but you're right. I mean, like, you know, their academic training teaches them that, nope, eventually you're going to die of cancer or you're going to get breast cancer. Right. <laughs> so. And like people do get cancer. I mean, you know, so, and, and but so, you know, she, she puts it together that way. And, you know, but again, yeah. like as we're getting older together and I see her like so tired and, you know, getting anxious, she can't sleep anymore. And it breaks my heart. She's a, a very wonderful human being. I mean, a big contributor to society. She's a breast sure. cancer surgeon and, you know, but like, you know, it's, it's hard to, to battle some of these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you just spend a couple minutes talking a little bit about your background um, and you know, why right. did you, why personally as an infectious disease doctor, what made you, you know, get into the world of hormone right. optimization and health optimization? Okay. Yeah. Well, I am happy to tell you my story. So first of all, I will say that I actually am still very much a practicing infectious diseases specialist and I don't go to the hospital anymore. I got offered an amazing job about five years ago, running an HIV treatment and prevention clinic here in South beach where I live. Um, for a wonderful uh, non-for-profit called Can Community Health. And so that's that's what I do for a lot of the week. And so basically, you know, I love infectious diseases. And so I was in my 30s, you know, working in the hospital, living my life, practicing medicine, feeling good, having a good time. And I was 37 and I was uh, sitting actually at a hotel bar with my ex-husband. We were about to run a half marathon the following day. And out of nowhere, I just started to have a, these severe abdominal cramps. And then I went back up to the hotel room and I started having profuse vaginal bleeding and it was not time for me to get my period. And I bled and bled and finally it kind of calmed down. 
did manage to run my half marathon the next day, like a type A, a good type A doctor. And priorities, then, baby, priorities. Right, right, exactly. And so then, you know, the the following week, I, I called my gynecologist. And of course, you know, they get me right in, VIP medical care, because I'm a doctor. And he, he does an exam and, you know, he does an ultrasound. And he tells me that I don't have cancer, which I, I never thought that I had cancer. And he tells me that I'm fine and that I have a couple of small fibroids and then I'm fine. Okay. But I'm not fine. Right. And so then like for the following few months, I started when I would have my period, it was so heavy that it really interfered with my life. I like literally couldn't do anything. I could see like one patient, I would have to change my tampon and I couldn't go to yoga. I would have blood running down my leg by the end of class. I mean, and I know some of you ladies out there also have these debilitating periods. So, I mean, I'm with you. So anyway, this, and I became exhausted. And again, I was totally healthy with no problems. So then I was at a party one night and I ran into a friend of mine who was practicing functional gynecology. And fortunately, you know, as a doctor, of course, I have a lot of doctor friends. And so I, I curbsided her. I pulled her aside at the party and I said, I hate to do this to you, but I, I feel horrible. And, you know, told her what was going on. And she said, listen, come on into my office and let's do a little workup. So my gynecologist, okay, he didn't draw any blood. All he did was this ultrasound and told me that I wasn't dying, which again, I never thought that I was. And so I went to see my friend and she drew some blood and she told me that I had hypothyroidism and that I had a low testosterone and that, you know, at that point I had been taking birth control pills for about 20 years because I didn't want to have a baby. And so, you know, I took these pills and she said, you take birth control pills for a long time. These things can happen. Your uterus can turn on you. You things, you have this abnormal proliferation of your uterine lining. So she put me on a little bit of thyroid medicine, a little bit of testosterone. I got off the birth control pills. She did an endometrial ablation and I, I got better. I went back to being my healthy, normal self. And it was amazing. And so, you know, at that time, I was working in a multi-specialty group. And so I was doing only infectious diseases in the hospital. But in the office, I was doing a blend of infectious diseases and internal medicine. And so I would take care of people for, you know, very complicated infections that required weeks of, of antibiotics. And a lot of times when I finished up the antibiotics, they would ask me if I would be their primary care physician. And I would often say yes. You know, I love... I love the practice of medicine. I love taking care of people. And I had all these middle-aged women. And again, I was in my 30s then. And they would tell me, you know, Dr. Wecker, I just feel so tired. And I would I would check their thyroid. It would look okay. And I probably wasn't checking it properly, but I did what I thought was the right thing to do. And then I would look at them and I would say, I'm so sorry. Your thyroid looks okay. I guess you're just going to be tired. And I look back at that now and I, I cringe. Like, I can't believe I said that to these women. But honestly... I, I just had no idea what to do. So that that whole episode really sparked my interest in looking to see if there was, was something more. And I started to kind of try to learn what I could and try to, you know, be more holistic. I mean, I always have tried to be as holistic as possible, but again, they, they only teach you certain things. And not I was you're only as strong as you're teaching. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. But I got to ask you a question about that. And I do have my tinfoil hat over there. I won't go put it on. But I mean, let's be honest. The world is based on profit. And if the medical schools were teaching their young physicians right out of school about hormonal optimization, there wouldn't be as much of a big pharma element, right? And then I don't know if that's true. I mean, I think, it, I mean, I mean, but if you, if, well, if you put it, maybe not, I mean, obviously there's still meds being prescribed even in our world, but I don't know. I, I, I think that the meds that we prescribe are for wellness and for enhancement and for optimization. And, and the, the most, again, not all, but most of the meds in, you know, quote unquote, sick care illness medicine is for managing disease and symptomology. And you so know, I, 
Yeah, I agree with that, but I I don't want to put it on like the medical school system because I think it's actually good. I mean, I think that what the problem is like the American culture, right? Is that, you know, we encourage people to, you know, eat all this junk food and, you know, people don't have enough money really to eat well and there's not enough information. So, I mean, I wouldn't put it on, you know, the medical, I mean, the medical system is broken, but I wouldn't put it on that. I mean, that's just a reaction to the culture. People get sick and they go to the hospital and I'll tell you, and this is, you know, kind of on a tangent, but I'll tell you something. When I was practicing hospital-based infectious diseases, you know, we do a lot of, uh, see a lot of diabetic ulcers, diabetic foot wounds, diabetic ulcers. And a lot of people have, you know, it's first, it's a couple of toes amputated and then half the foot and then below the knee, above the knee, then you're, you know, minus both of your legs on dialysis. And I would go into someone's room. And so of course, you know, we see all these people because as infectious diseases specialists, because they need long courses of intravenous antibiotics. And I would go into someone's room and this happened actually like many times I would go into someone's room and you know, there they are after their leg amputation. And I would tell them, you know, listen, you know, like, let's talk about your lifestyle, right? Like, let's talk about your diet. And, and, and they would say, you know, you want me to stop eating bread? Are you trying to ruin my life? I don't, I don't have I a leg. Say, I know. And I would say, look, I mean, you said your leg amputated. Like, if you want to cry about your leg, I will sit here with you and hold your hand. And, you know, I'm very warm and fuzzy. I'm like a hugging doctor. But the bread, like, come on, like, let's do everything we can to make sure that you're going to keep your other leg. Like, I'll give you these antibiotics, but like, but you have to change your lifestyle and, and, and people don't want to hear it. And I think the thing with our type of medicine is people seek that out. You know, like if you want to see a right. functional medicine doctor, you have to pay for it. You right. have to find the doctor like you are interested in your health. And unfortunately, like a lot of America they're not interested in their health. And, and that's, but, I mean, but why is that? I mean, I mean, I know it's I'm but that's not, not the medical. That's the culture. That's no, 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 no. I know I'm not. I'm, I'm, but I want to go deeper and probe you for that answer, because, yes, of course. But it's just it's so it's how do I say this? It's so anathema to my existence as a being like. Like I'm here to like maximize my experience, right? Now I know a lot of people aren't, right? Like a lot of people are here to just engorge themselves with food, you know, be addicted to porn or alcohol or marijuana or whatever else it is and just enjoy their life, right? But it's like if you had some level of spiritual awareness, you would realize that the body is a temple. And that you have a temple to maximize. And it's like, why would you not take care of it? But you're right. A lot of people don't right. give a shit. No, and I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you at all. No, I know but, you don't. But I think what you have to realize is that, you know, you're coming into contact with like one little segment of the population. Right. And, and, right. and now, actually, I'm also coming into contact with a limited segment of the population. But... When I was doing hospital-based infectious diseases, I came in contact with everybody. And there's a lot of people that, you know, they're they're like fairly towards the bottom of Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Right, right. And so they're really trying to make sure that, you know, that they have food and shelter right. and sure. maybe there's like some drug addiction and they're, you know, they're not like, they're not self-aware and they're right. not. Like we're, we're like, you, for just said it, okay. but you literally so just said it. You just said the magic words. It's self-awareness and that's perfectly okay. Right. Because we're all evolving at our own rate and speed spiritually, you know, vibrationally, whatever you're right. So it's like, so, I mean, you just, you got me. It's, it's, it's true. You know, there's just p different levels of consciousness and different levels of people in survival. Like you said, yeah. that and, and honestly, when, when you like, I think the average family of four in America lives on around $40,000 a year, $45,000 a year, which honestly, no, I can't even conceive of it. But, but I mean, when I go to Whole Foods, I mean, I, you know, I'm a doctor. I go to Whole Foods. I'm one person. I buy whatever I want. I mean, right. Right. if I want like the $15 pecan butter, like I, I get it. I mean, but not everyone, I mean, I'm just, I mean, honestly, not everyone has that. Damn you. You bought the <laughs> $15 pecan butter. Keep that to yourself, bro. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, not everyone can do those things. And so I'm not saying that people don't have options to make better choices, but, but like, you have to keep in mind that, you know, the 330 million people in America, like not everyone is, you know, is at your, no, your I got economic, it. you know, economic level. Well, it's like what I always say. And, you know, the guys say this now they've adopted this and they put this in some of their emails, but like, you know, your health should be a priority. 
right? Again, we know based on what you and I just talked about the last three minute, three or four minutes, it's not for a large percentage of people, but for the ones that are, you know, and again, it's 5%, you know, or maybe it's even a microcosm of that 5%. But, but the truth is, is that you have to have a, a, like you were saying about seeking out a health optimization physician to kind of flip the script now, um, that your life is based on not the $40 copayment, right? It's based on the mindset that like, I'm going to spend whatever it takes to live longest and strongest within the context of health and longevity, right? Not like steroids or performance enhancing agents that, you know, compromise health. And so I always say now, like you, regardless of your income, you should be looking at spending somewhere between $3,500 and $10,000 a year on your personalized health care. And if you're not, because you can easily afford it, again, we're talking about this small subset, your your priorities are, else, are upside down. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I agree with that. And actually, so I'll tell you, actually, at, at CAN, um, I actually do everything I can um, to, to optimize my patients. And, you know, you can do a lot within the traditional medical framework if you're interested in doing it. I mean, I order, you know, just standard blood tests from Quest and LabCorp. I put my patients on prescription vitamin D that I can get for them for free. Like I do everything that I can to like, you know, to optimize them. And I take care of some pretty marginalized people and I, you know, I, I do my best with them. And so, I mean, there definitely needs to be a shift in medical education and I, and I think it's getting there, you know, but it's, it's always, it's always slow to, uh, to adopt. But well, but anyway, it, well a- medicine is a giant barge in the, in the Pacific ocean, right? And <laughs> you a barge around, it takes a long time. There's a lot of inertia, but you are leading from the front. And, you know, to my audience, you know, I've met you and spent time with you at different conferences and you are a, you know, visionary. And, you know, really all of us are visionaries because, again, we're so far out in front of the mainstream still. But, you know, and, and that's kind of the next point. What we teach or espouse or preach every day is going to be the mainstream, as you know, within the next 10 years. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this- it has to be. Yeah. So, yeah. So just to, to finish my to finish up my previous story. So after all that stuff happened to me, then a couple of years after that, I got introduced to to Michael, who owns and runs the Medical Health Institute. And he was we got introduced by a mutual friend and he was looking for a, a new medical director. And this was, gosh, seven, seven years ago, maybe. And, and so we had this really interesting, we met up at this local organic food cafe and had this really interesting conversation. And I said, oh, right, this is something I really want to do on the side. And that night I went home and I signed up for the fellowship at A4M. And so then over the next few years, I did my fellowship in functional anti-aging and regenerative medicine at A4M. And then when I finished my fellowship, I did my advanced fellowship. And in the middle of all that, I did my peptide certification. And then there was, I had to stop working for the Medical Health Institute for a few years, but then I was able to go back. And now, um, and so now that's what I do. So I work for CAN Monday to Thursday. I work for the Medical Health Institute on Fridays and on sometimes on the weekends too. And I feel like it's just such a nice blend of, you know, of traditional and, and functional medicine and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it very, very, very much. That's awesome. Well, 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 and I'm glad you finished that. Um, and again, you know, full disclosure, I don't bring people on here that I don't work with personally myself. My wife works with Amy, Dr. Wecker, and has been now for more, what, more than a year, right? Like you're actually, you, you need to see her. She needs to get some labs done pretty soon here. But <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, personally, I have no problem sharing this. You really did transform her hormonal optimization. She's worked with a lot of different women physicians uh, and some nurse practitioners, I would say in the last like six years that her and I have really been focused on working with various physicians and you, the formulations that you have given her, you know, with the capsules, the oral testosterone and estrogen and also progesterone have been amazing for Monica. You know, I've obviously shared this with those guys and also Dr. Eberlein um, that, you know, you really changed the game for her. So it's like, you know, it's, this has been a long time coming. And obviously the rest of this podcast is really to just, direct women who are watching this because again i have a lot thankfully now a lot of female uh you know aging females in my audience and they always will message me with the same song and dance why do you always promote these great male (laughs) optimization doctors and you leave me in the cold and i'm always been like look you know it's just harder for me to find somebody and so 
I'm really grateful that, you know, you guys at MHI, Michael and Carlos, of course, you and Dr. Everwine and also Sienna, you guys are going to be the place that I direct women to go to, you know, and I wouldn't do that if I didn't know that you guys were going to do a great job. Because again, you've worked, you've personally worked with my wife and she's never been better hormonally. And I'll actually tell you something that I can't share on the air from something today where we went to, we, we spoke to a physician down here about something else. And all he could say was like, your, your wife's 51 years old. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. You. He kept saying, she looks, yeah, saying, she looks amazing. When I just saw you she's guys. 51 years old. And I'm like, yeah, you should see your doctor. <laughs> I, I was I was jo- I was joking around with him, but uh, but he's also a, a world class in shape, a lot younger than us. He's like 40, 40, 39 or forty, maybe forty one. But anyway, really really cool guy. I actually met this guy in Playa del Carmen like five years ago too. He's an amazing guy, Italian guy. But um, so let's just so let's talk about. So we obviously have your backstory though, but you know you have your fellowship with peptides and hormone certification for A4M and I know you go to a lot of the different conferences and you and I you know met originally at the peptide conference which by the way that was 5 years ago oh gosh that was 2018 can you believe that i'm telling you every year it goes faster and faster and it's faster unreal dude i mean the pep that whole that whole thing seeds his deal and un- unraveled during covid isn't that unbelievable there isn't even really a peptide you know governing board or regular, you know, I mean, I know A4M has their own little preptide protocol things, but that thing was going to be big. And then, you know, Taylor May got taken down and, you know, everything just went south. So it's, it's like, it's sad because it seems like peptides has kind of fallen by the wayside because, you know, there's FDA scrutiny, there are certain peptides that they won't, you know, give approval. And so a lot of physicians are like, oh, it's a gray area. I won't do it. But thankfully there's still a lot of compounding pharmacies, as you, of course, as you know, because you use them. They're out there, you know, leading from the front. And why don't you just talk a little bit about peptide medicine? Because, I mean, all these people that follow me know that I'm a big peptide guy. And I talk about it and have tons of articles and research and a course and blah, blah, blah. But as a physician, maybe you can just share, like, the wondrous awe. Sure. Being with sure. Yeah. So, um, well, so peptides. So what is a peptide? So peptides are strings of amino acids. They're not complete proteins. They're just strings of amino acids. And, and we have different peptides for different things. And so I think the peptides that everybody, you know, very, very, everyone focuses on initially would be the, the performance enhancing peptides, the growth hormone releasing agents. And, and like I had said earlier, we produce massive quantities of everything until we're about 25 and then it all slowly starts to decline. And one of the hormones that declines significantly is growth hormone and growth hormone genuinely is the fountain of youth. Okay. Oh. So and so it's, I mean, it, it helps you recover. It's good for your sleep, for your skin, for your I'm energy, for putting on muscle, for, for burning fat. And, <laughs> you know, you can use growth hormone. Um, and I'm not, you know, anti-growth hormone, but, you know, you have to be really careful with it. Yes. You don't want to use it for long term and yes. you can get some weird side effects because growth hormone is released in a pulsatile manner. Okay. Right. So you get like nine or 10 pulses throughout the day and night. And the biggest one is in the middle of the night, which is part of why it's so important to get good sleep. And so as we age, the, you, still, you, you still have those pulses. The pulses are maintained. They just get smaller. So if a pulse looks like this when you're 20, it looks like this when you're 70, but they are still there. And so you've got to be careful with, when taking actual growth hormone because you can sometimes interfere with that pulsatile release. So we have these peptides, epsomorlin and then epimorlin, CJC, that... Uh, stimulate your brain to produce and release more of its own natural growth hormone. So you get to restore the growth hormone in a, just a very safe physiologic way. So, so that, that, that's kind of like the crux of, of those peptides. And then we also have repair peptides, which are unbelievable, which are great for injuries. Um, we have peptides that are good for your immune system. Of course, now everyone is all over semaglutide and terzepatide, these peptides for weight loss. Uh, so, and there's, there's, there's a whole big, you know, there's a whole big universe of it, but, but that's, you know, kind of my nutshell synopsis. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I mean, that was a lot. So, I mean, 
in a very, very short, I mean, look, I, and, and I know I take this for granted too, because again, I've been using peptides since 2004. Um, you have a mastery of the subject. I mean, just talking about all that stuff. I mean, again, most physicians message me all the time and they're like, how can I get more? You know, I took your course already. It was amazing, but how can I get deeper? So, I mean, like we, you, meaning people like us in our community take for granted the peptides are still very new and novel agents that very few doctors even really truly have any experience with. And it's interesting because, again, you already know how to use them and manipulate them and get benefits and, and results for your patients. And yet you still have like, I would say probably, Amy, 60 to 70 percent of physicians that want to use peptides in their practices still don't really understand them. Because, like you said, they're really, you know, outside of A4M and some you know, things like the seeds, there really isn't anywhere to go to learn about. And no, I mean, I took, you know, the full A4M, you know, module one, two, three, four peptides. And then I then Dr. Seed's course as well. And I'll probably do another one of Dr. Seed's courses at some point this year. I mean, if you, if you want to do this stuff, you got to be committed to constantly learning about it. Yeah. And, and a lot of docs really don't have the time, you know, they're so, you know, well, th let me ask you about that because obviously you work in both. Do you feel that like doctors that are just focused on, you know, insurance subrogation in their practice um, versus the docs that are really now just strictly cash pay, call them wellness or functional, or again, I call them optimization health docs. Where do you think the balance is? Like, how do you actually draw as a physician yourself dealing with these same things in your life? Like, how do you balance both? Like, how do you work where, you know, you do take insurance to get on something? Yeah. Well, it's it's tough. I have to say, like, I'm very, very, very lucky to to have the job that I have for CAN because CAN, you know, I take care of patients with some very sensitive issues. Like I said, it's an HIV treatment and prevention clinic. And I also do quite a bit of transgender care because I have become a hormone expert. So right. a lot of my transgender patients that came to me, I realized their hormones were mismanaged. So I started doing it myself and I, now I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at it. And so the CAM understands that, you know, that I need to have some time to do these things. And so we have long appointments at CAN, you awesome. know, I have, which is amazing. But back when I was in private practice, 15 I, minutes. Yeah, you got to see people so quickly. And so, you know, to really properly take care of someone, you have to really get in there and you have to really know, like, like what is going on with your life? Like, what are you eating? And, and, and how is your day structured? And how much are you exercising? And, and what kind of stress are you under? Do you have any mindfulness practices? What are you taking? Not just prescription drugs, but what supplements are you taking? Like, and, and what, what other, you know, what are your relationships like? Like you have to really get in there and it takes a long time. And actually I feel like as an infectious diseases specialist, I was well suited to do this because as an ID doctor, we also have to really get in there because people get weird infections and you have to understand like, where did it come from? And so we really get in there in, in people's lives to try to figure out like what exactly happened. So like, I I'm, I'm very lucky, but you know, when, when you're in a job where you're working a ton of hours and you're overwhelmed with your patient load, honestly, you know, there's not that much time for anything else. And, I, and I've had, yeah. And I've had so many conversations with so many physicians who want to break from, you know, managed care and surge subrogation in their practice and just become, you know, cash pay. And there's like a horrifying fear of like, you know, going on your own and not having that, you know, paycheck, so to speak, coming from right. insurance. You know, yeah. From, Look, to, it's, hard. it's a little different for me. Like, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't be afraid of it, but for me, like I feel very strongly about the work that I do at CAN. And yeah. like I said, I take care of some pretty marginalized people and it's really important to me to be able to take care of them. And and so, you know, we're a non for profit and it's a little bit different. Like, so yeah. I'm salaried and, you know, I, they let me do my thing. They let me prescribe whatever I want to my patients. Right. So I do definitely, like I have patients that have some money and I definitely put them on peptides. And, and so that, I feel like it's really pretty ideal, but, but yeah, like if you're in managed care, you know, it's, it's not, it's not optimal. Yeah. You get burned out. You have to see way too many people. You, you can't really do too much with someone in 10 minutes. It's sad really, because I mean, again, you guys all start, you know, to be healers and, you know, you take that Hippocratic oath and you know, in the last, really it's been in the last, I'd say 15 to 16 years, insurance is just, just it's taken the joy out of it, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. And and when you have like, like so many patients to see that you're rushing and you're cutting corners, like 
it's, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable, you know, and we generally doctors, I mean, we love the practice of medicine. Like it's, we love it. Yeah. And you don't have time to practice it. Okay. Well, the last couple of points is your style of practice. Like how, what is the style of medicine that you practice? How would you quantify that? So I, I really like to try to keep things as, as simple as possible. So, and, and I know also like, um, you know, it's easy for people to get overwhelmed. So I try to keep things straightforward. And, you know, I say that I'm a light, I have a light hand and I'm a minimalist, you know, but so I, I definitely take things in stages. So if you come to see me, you know, we have an hour visit. And so first I will ask you what your story is and I will listen to absolutely anything that you have to say. I, what I usually say is I'd like to start by listening to your story. You tell me whatever you think is important. And then when you're done, I will ask you questions to fill in the blanks. So I will let my patients tell me whatever they want. And then I will ask about the lifestyle, the sleep, your periods, your sex drive, your energy, you know, your diet, your exercise, your goals, right? It's important to know what your goals are because otherwise, how can I help you achieve them? And then, and then we go through labs and I, you know, there's a lot of amazing specialty lab companies where you can order a lot of specialty lab tests and those, those can be wonderful, but I don't, I don't typically order those. We get a comprehensive lab panel, but we just get labs from from LabCorp, you know, straightforward labs from Quest and LabCorp, which I think, you know, you can really do a lot with. And so we get those and then we'll go through the labs and really in detail talk about everything and what it all means. And then and then we'll talk about, you know, getting started on some hormones. Usually on the first visit, I like to do the hormones and a very short list of what I consider be essential supplements, okay, right. because I think a lot of times in anti-aging clinics, you know, people try to do too much too fast. And then you have someone with this, you know, huge array of bottles and they're like, well, you know, what am I supposed to do with all this? And then, you know, maybe you don't take any of it. So I try to keep it like super basic. And then on the second visit, we can go a little bit deeper. We could talk about some peptides if desired. Sure. I never, I never try to really pressure anyone into anything. Uh, I am also really interested in autoimmune disease because I myself have autoimmune thyroid disease. And so I'm like kind of, I'm extra interested in the thyroid, of course, because it's something that affects me. So, um, and it, it's grossly mismanaged. Totally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm sure you're familiar with the book, Stop the Thyroid Madness. I read that book like six or seven years ago because my ex-wife had horrible thyroid issues too. I think I told you about that when we first met and I had to you know, self-educate myself because you're right, man, like thyroid disease, especially in women is so misdiagnosed and mistreated and mismanaged. It's mind blowing. I mean, I still see so many docs that just prescribe massive amounts of Synthroid. Yeah. 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 And the thing is like, I'm not saying that the TSH isn't important. Of course the TSH is important, but right. what I would argue is more important than the TSH even is the free T3. And interestingly, the free T3 is not even part of the standard panel. When no. you order like the TSH panel, it doesn't come with it. You you have to order a separate free T3, which is fine. Like you can order it and I always do. But like if all you order is the TSH panel, you're getting an incomplete picture and you have to look at the TSH and the free T3 together. And um, I mean, th this is probably beyond the scope of this podcast. No, but I mean no, no, it's really good. I mean, it, it shows the intricacies of like, you know, how detailed and serious you get. But no, I'm very familiar with that because I've dealt with that myself. And you're right. I mean, TSH is not going to give anyone in isolation an accurate gauge of how productive or ineffective their thyroid function really is. Yeah. And you've got all these people on Synthroid with a normal TSH and they're I like, agree. I don't feel well. And then the doctor says, well, your TSH is fine. You're fine. And I've said that too, like back before I did my, my fellowship at A4M. And, uh, but, but yes, it's, it's a lot more involved than that. Well, I've seen, you know, to just stay there and go a little bit deeper. I mean, I've seen women who are taking insane dosages of T3 and have become, as you know, completely dependent on the thyroid medication. And then when they attempt to wean themselves off or find out that, you know, they weren't actually getting the correct treatment, uh, you know, drug, drug wise, they are, they now are screwed because their thyroid is completely decimated from the T3, the high dosage of T3. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of, of Synthroid. Um, you know, I prefer the natural desiccated thyroid preparations and yeah. the porcine thyroid. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. All right. So just to kind of end, um, you know, 
to, so again, you're going to be doing in person and of course, you know, a virtual, a lot of virtual consults, but just to give people kind of an idea, you know, a woman for the most part, and I know you have, you work with men too. So, I mean, there's going to be times where you'll probably be working with men, but I'm going to be pushing a lot of women to you. Um, what, what can they expect like over a year, you know, type, like how many times do you, will they be visiting with you? How many times will they need to get their lab work? I mean, I know these are generalities, but yeah. just you know, big picture. Well, well, it really depends on what's going on. So we will do the initial visit and then we do a follow-up, which I like to do in about three months, give right. or take. And then after that, honestly, it depends. So some people are complicated and they need a little bit more care. So if you have like an autoimmune disease, then I might need to see you in another three months. If everything seems to be fine, then maybe six months. And and once we get everything optimized, then we can do annual visits. Um, but it really is individual because again, some people are more complicated than others and women, we are more complicated than men, you know? And I think that's a good thing, right? Maybe we're more interesting. So, yeah. but, but we are more complicated. We have more hormones to balance and, you know, we cycle all this kind of stuff. So, so yeah, usually for at the, after the first visit, you know, we get started on some stuff. You usually start to feel better in a, about a month, give or take. And then when we have our follow-up, we'll make some adjustments. Like I said, I have a light hand, I like to start everybody a little bit lower than where I think they need to be because I would rather underdose somebody than overdose someone. Start I'd much low, rather have you, yeah, I'd much rather have you come back to me and say like, you know, my sleep is better, but it's not perfect. Like, okay, no problem. Rather than like, oh my goodness, like I'm going crazy. I just don't wake up anymore, doc. What did you do? To me? Yeah, right. Like I, I'm really bloated. I can't stop crying. Like I don't, I don't want those things. So so I have a light hand, you know, and I usually will slowly start edging up on things until we get to to the right dose. And then every visit we can go a little bit deeper, you know, or not, depending on what you want. I mean, I'm very much like we're all different. Some people yeah. want to do a lot of stuff. Some people don't. So I, you know, it's it's case by case. Well, I want to I want to make a joke. I'm going to share the screen real quick with you on the show so that we can make fun of these guys. And I'm going to be like, <laughs> uh, guys, where is Amy? Like I say that to them every day, like, can you not get a picture that actually has your chief selling point? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Dr. Ryan on, is pretty amazing. This, on this website, like you guys all look great, but you need to get Amy in there. And every time I talk to Miguel, he's like, dude, it's on the list. I'm like, it's got to be on the list faster. So I figured I would just make a joke <laughs> and put it on the podcast so that they can all see it. Yeah. And now they're going to be like pressured to like you guys to get your photography. In. And by the way, you know, that's simple, right? You could literally just send them one of your profile pics and they could just put that in. They, the they have, they have a ton of pictures of me. All right. Well now see, I just, I just, I just humiliated them. So, you know, when he sees this, he's like, bro, why did you do that? And I would be like, you know why I did that. But anyway, uh, honestly, amazing. I'm so grateful that you came on here today. Is there any other place, you know, I know you work with, uh, the other place it's can, right? Like, is there any other place that you want to direct people to, you know, from a website point, or even if somebody wants to, you know, connect with you, not from MHI, because obviously that's MHILife.com, you know, if you're female and, and that'll be in the podcast show notes and all that stuff. But is there any place you want to direct people or if somebody wants to connect with you or podcast with you that you want to have them go? Well, I mean, I'm happy to, I mean, I'm happy to share my Instagram Okay, yeah, um, it, please. It's, it's really, you can see my yoga practice on there. It's really all yoga, but yeah, I, but I do respond because people do reach out to me on Instagram and that if, if you're just like a, just a random person that wants to get in touch with me, probably DMing me on Instagram would be the best way. So my Instagram is Amy Wecker, MD. Amy Wecker, MD. Yes. Yeah, I, you can oh, see me. Yeah. You can see me doing yoga, but I do definitely respond to DMs. And of course, if you're living in the Miami area, and you have um, HIV or you want some PrEP or you're a transgender and you want some hormones, of course, you could come see me at Can Community Health. But um, that's a, like a kind of a specialized thing. And then, if, yeah, the Medical Health Institute. Yeah. MHILife.com, guys. MHILife.com. And like I said, uh, now that we finally got Amy introduced to the audience there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be coming in. You know, we're going to obviously also do a big, deep Google indexed article about MHI, about you, about Rudy, uh, and, you know, what patients can expect and all that yeah. stuff. So expect to be working more weekends pretty soon, Amy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Blessing and a curse. 
Good or bad, I don't know. You can talk to Michael about that. So again, honestly, thank you so much for coming on the show. So ladies and gentlemen, of course, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Go to her Instagram, which is Amy Wecker, MD. And if you're interested as a female in hormonal health optimization and literally leveling up your life as you age, go to mhilife.com and remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.